Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TCD Talk, back today with another video, and today we are doing another How to Ninja video guide. I think we're in the fifth episode for this, I'm pretty sure. Um, for anyone who's new to the channel or hasn't seen the series yet, I'm doing a How to Ninja series where I just go over every facet of ninja possible um, to try to give you all the best guide guideline if you're whether you're a new player or like a player that's coming from a different class or whatever it may be uh hopefully i can give you some suggestions so you can start playing ninja effectively and just have fun with the class um the last two videos we covered benji and then ira as hero overviews and now we're gonna be doing katsu uh, which you see on your screen right now um katsu is uh the only constructed cc ninja hero right now or constructed CC, same thing. The only constructed ninja hero right now uh, until Phi comes out in Uprising. And he is really good. Um, I'd say he's kind of a mid-tier hero right now, though, just because of the meta. But he's had definitely had some moments where he was really good um, in different and various forms. So we're going to kind of get into it. Um, if you're a newer player, the key takeaway with Katsu is you're trying to do two things. One, you're trying to do what every ninja does, and you're trying to attack and gain card advantage by threatening more card draw and continuing your turn with a lot of go again and stuff like that. And then the second thing that Katsu does specifically is when it, the first time an attack action you control hits, he's able to discard a card with zero and then go search for a word uh, or attack action with the word combo in it and then banish it and then shuffle his deck and he's allowed to play at that turn. So basically what he's allowed to do is he threatens the first time an attack hits every turn, he's allowed to go get another attack. Now that attack could combo with another attack, and we'll talk about what that means in a minute, which basically means it gets an added plussed up effect, or he can just go get a good attack um, that is still combo, but maybe it's a different attack that you know is zero cost or something like that. So getting into it, um, his main weapon of choice is Kadachis. You, I don't think you'll ever see a Katsu that doesn't have Kadachis unless they're just like memeing and playing like a funny deck. Uh, it's really good to help gain card advantage and to threaten that mask of momentum, which is, uh, well, it was right here, uh, right here, mask of momentum. So you use those, you use those Kadachis because mask of momentum, similar to the previous videos I told you about, is when an attack action card you control hits, and it's the third or higher chain in a row to hit, you draw a card. So basically, you use those Kadachis effectively in order to gain a card advantage with mask of momentum. My stuff is so out of order here. I swear I put it in right. Um, so you use those Kadachis to get mask of momentum. And along with your attacks and just gain card advantage as much as you can. Um, I said before that he uses something called combo. So as you can see here, Lord of Wind is normally is a blue that is uh, pitches for three, right? It attacks for two and it costs zero to play. And that's it. But if you have its combo effect, which basically means um, if you had combined it with another attack, the previous chain, it gets a plus up effect, right? So when it's comboed, so it's combo is when McGinchy release, which you saw uh, right here, when it's comboed with McGinchy release, and then you play a Lord of Wind, it basically allows you to pay X resource points as an additional cost. If you do, you can shuffle that many cards named Surging Strike, Whelming Gust Wave, and McGinchy from your graveyard back into your uh, deck, and Lord of Wind gains that much more attack. It's a lot of text. That's probably one of the most complicated combo cards in the game. Um, but it gets a, basically a plus up ability, right? A simpler one is 100 wins. 100 wins normally is a zero cost three attack with go again, but if it's comboed with another 100 wins from a prior attack, it gets plus one for every 100 wins on the chain. So basically you use that combo ability to search for cards to be able to combine them with cards that they need in order to get their combo effects. Um, and that's the whole point of Katsu. Uh, the other point is to use cards that are combo starters, like a leg tap, which then combos in a rise and knee thrust, or you use like a uh, surging strike, which is comboed into a whelming gust wave, a head jab, it's comboed into an open the center. As you can see, like you're start, you put a lot of pressure on your opponent by having go again attacks that also will allow you to go search your deck uh, for more attacks that then buff, get buffed from you having played that attack prior to it. So that's the baseline of it. Um, again, very fast based hero. There's really three forms of Katsu. Um, you have aggro mid-range control. Control Katsu is gone, at least for any reasonable amount of time. He's kind of dead. Uh, but back then, back in the day, like original walk on a rave time frame, control Katsu was the thing where you would use your Kadachis basically in like an attack while also blocking a little bit, using sigils, flick flax, all that stuff um, in order to gain card advantage and slowly like basically bleed out your opponent uh, like death by a thousand cuts. There's a mid-range Katsu, which again... 
uh, right now is just not really viable with the current meta, uh, which is you're trying to block with a few cards from hand and attack with a few cards and threaten, you know, drawing and stuff like that and try to eventually gain card advantage. But again, it's not that Katsu can't play mid range. It's just the fundamental purpose of the class is really to go aggro, to be honest, like Katsu's ability is aggro is an aggro based ability. Ninjas as a whole, like thematically aren't meant to block, right? They don't have a lot of armor. They're really fast, lie on their feet and they're meant to attack. So mid range isn't as viable anymore either. It's really just aggro at the moment, or like maybe a slightly less aggro version. That's a little bit more versatile, but for the most part, it's a, uh, it's an aggro based hero. So if you like aggro, if you like hitting on people, a lot of different attacks and doing a lot of different unsuspected things, then Katsu may be really good for you. Um, similar to what I did with Benji and Ira, I will give you two uh, decks that I have made. Uh, I've done deck techs on these decks before, but if this is your first time visiting the channel, you'll kind of understand. So I'll go through them really quick. Basically, in my opinion, there's two types of aggro Katsu. There's a Breeze Rider Boots build, and then there is a regular aggro Snapdragon Scalers build. So the most common one you'll see is the Snapdragon Scalers um, using Mask of Momentum, Tunic, and Breaking Skills, and then Snaps with the Kadachis. Um, and the baseline of this, this build, and I'll link it down below, is basically you're utilizing combo starters um, like Surging Strike, uh, Leg Tap, um, and, uh, and then other breakpoint attacks like Soul Beat Strike and Torrent Tempo to put a lot of pressure on your opponent and force them to try to have to block you to, to stop your turn, basically. Um, if they don't, then you're just going to keep going. So basically, your best defense is a good offense, right? You're using a lot of breakpoint in Flesh and Blood. Uh, four power attacks is sort of the breakpoint right now. It forces either a card from hand and a equipment or two cards from hand or defense reaction, which is really what you want. And basically, your your way of gaining defense is making them commit cards in order to block you so they have less cards for their attacking turn. Um, kind of the key things with Katsu, in my opinion, are blues. So if you're doing an aggro Katsu build, the lowest blues I would go are 13. And the highest blues I would go is probably 15 to 16. Probably 15 is a sweet spot. Um, and then the other thing is cards that are not attack actions, right? So like Ancestral Empowerment, even bigger than that. Um, razor reflex, uh, lunging press, never go above 13. I would say even 12. If you go more than that, you're going to start getting some inconsistencies in your deck. Um, so if you're building Katsu for the first time and it's aggro Katsu, I would start with about 13 blues, 13 to 15 blues, and then around 12 to 13 cards in your deck that are not attacks. Um, I would not go outside of those numbers just to let you know. So this is the baseline of it. Put a lot of pressure on your opponent. Breeze Rider boots, uh, Similar in that your best all best defense is a good offense. The difference between this build and the other build is you don't have Snapdragon Scalers. You have Breeze Rider Boots, which basically is the first time a ninja attack action hits. You can pop them. It'll basically give all cards with combo go again, including that card that just hit technically. Um, so what it allows you to do is kind of switch between combo lines. The other deck put a lot of pressure on your opponent, but it was very linear in a way, but it's kind of technically more pressure turn to turn. This one isn't as much pressure turn to turn, but it's definitely the pop off ability is, is greater because in this first build, I can't. So like the way Katsu works is if I go surging strike to Wyoming Gust wave, which is the combo line, I can't play. I don't know, Rise and Ethrust after that and Rise and Ethrust where I have go again because it doesn't work that way, right? Unless I snap Rise and Ethrust. I have to play the cards in their combo line. In this Breeze Rider Boots build, I can switch combo lines mid-combo. So I could go 100 wins, right, into and pop Breeze Rider Boots and play Winds of Eternity for four go again and then play Open the Center for five uh, go again and then play... Break, uh, not break tide, a fluster fist for six go again, right? Like I can switch between combo lines. So what it allows you to do is it makes you less predictable. And if they don't block properly, it really just makes you be able to have an insane pop off turn depending on what's in your hand. I've had turns where I've gone from one to another one. Um, and it's just, it can be really oppressive. So try both out, see which one's best for you. Some people like this play style better. Some people like the Snapdragon Skillers play style better. But it really just depends on what you like to do. Um, key cards for Katsu for anybody that's wondering. Definitely get the Surging Strike line. So Surging Strike into Whelming Gust Wave. And then Whelming Gust Wave into McGinshi Release. And then McGinshi Release into Lordwind. That's a big line. Um, I definitely would get Ancestral. Maybe not, I mean, you don't have to have Ancestral Empowerments. Definitely should have even bigger than that. If you're going to run Aggro Katsu, that's a must-have. 
Um, I would have the leg tap line, leg tap and the rise knee thrust, and then probably at least have hurricane technique as well. Um, and then finally, the blues are pretty staple, right? Like you want to have Lord of Wind as a blue. Um, you want to have, you know, uh, basically I would just try to get each of the combo lines. They're not super expensive. The only even remotely expensive card, and it's not even expensive in the combo lines is Lord of Wind. Um, none of the other ones are stupid expensive. Like none of the cards in those combo lines are over like 10 bucks. Uh, Winds of Eternity actually might be the most expensive one if I had to guess. Um, but they're not expensive cards and you can definitely get the core of what Katsu does without spending a ton of money. Your most expensive thing in Katsu is going to be mask momentum. Like you technically don't need enlightened strikes to play Katsu. You don't, you don't need command and conquerors to play Katsu. You can play Katsu just fine without those cards and he will have similar to the same pressure. So yeah, hopefully this made sense. Um, I'll link both deck lists down below so you all can see how it is. If you like this video, please leave a like comment or subscribe. If not, I made a video a couple of videos back talking about different flesh and blood creators in the scene. Go to that video. There's a Google doc in the description. Go find other flesh and blood creators, uh, like their content, follow them. Um, so we can get more people seeing this game and yeah, I hope you all have a good rest of your day and I'll see y'all next time on TCG talk. Thank y'all so much.